What is good? We're back. We got our guy JB. What's up, dude? Always a pleasure. Uh, you know, I know I know these are cut up between two episodes, mm-hmm. but I, still still on a high, if you will, from that, <laughs> that last episode. Love it. Go, going through the rookie comparisons and how we value these veteran guys. But now I'm excited to talk about this topic. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna touch on a little sleeper, probably a little little shorter, uh, not not sleeper sleepers, a little shorter episode here. But uh, I wanted to start throwing some guys out, and and at this point, I don't know how if they're sleepers anymore, but you know, it's it's a good term, so want to keep it alive. Kind of kind of more names to know that I that, that could rise up, and maybe some people already have them, kind of maybe at the bottom of the second round ish. But I think a lot of these guys are guys who could who could really rise up uh, through this whole process here. So. Um, JB, why don't you hit us with your with your first uh, sleeper or, or name to know here? Who are you excited about? So my first guy, I, I see him as like an early day three prospect. Jacob Cowing out of Arizona, 5'11", 174 pounds. BMI is going to be a topic of conversation. He's a non-early declare, so let's get the bad stuff mm, out of the way. Mm. Uh, I know, I know. And in the spreadsheets, uh, the, the <laughs> analytics folks, we, we hate the non-early declares. But. 3.71 yards per team pass attempt. That is elite. 41% receiving yard market share, 35% reception market share, 11% contested target rate in his final season at Arizona. He gets a 18 year old breakout age, 19 year old, 30% breakout age speed, maybe like four five ish. You know, obviously that's an estimate at this point in this class, the way you look at these guys, like this class, a lot of it, the strength comes from the wide receivers. And we talked about it on the previous yeah, episode, for sure. but Marvin Harrison, Roma Dunes and Malik neighbors. You get into Xavier worthy, Troy Franklin, Brian Thomas. Uh, uh, I know a lot of people like Xavier Leggett, Devontae Walker. But once you get beyond that, like I, I know I didn't mention Keon Coleman, Jalen Polk, but Jacob Cowing, it, it, he's a player that is really going to be intriguing for me. And he very well, could be pushing towards that wide receiver eight in the class for me. Uh, now, now, you know, I, again, we'll see how things play out. And this is with the expectation that he goes early fourth round and, Oh, well got, got to go in the first three rounds. We've seen such a high ceiling from so many of these guys. Uh, you know, maybe it is recency bias, but Almond Ross St. Brown, Puka Nakua, you know, you have these guys that are going a little bit later and it's just kind of the way the NFL has been shaping up. Uh, so even with early day three draft capital, now if that slips into sixth, seventh round, yeah, we're going to adjust. Uh, <laughs> but but coming out of Arizona, where obviously he performed at such a high level running through those numbers, I, I really think I would not be surprised if he ultimately ended up with a, a better rookie season and maybe a first three year outlook than like a Keon Coleman, who a lot of people think is going in the first round of the NFL draft. Mm-hmm. And for me personally, that'd be a big mistake. But anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, Jacob Cowing, I, I think he's a very interesting prospect that should be on your radar. Yeah, it looks looks like these projected four four flat. I was, I mean, I had a four five estimate. Give me four four. Oh yeah, my gosh. Well, I, I was just one site that I was scrolling through as you were saying that, but I mean, that seems really fast. If if, if you were thinking four five, and if, it's, it's probably a little higher than four four flat. So, uh, but yeah, no, he's 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 an interesting one that I've I've heard a little bit of buzz about. So glad you're excited about him. I could stick with with receivers here. I'm gonna go Malachi Corley here. You got any thoughts on him? Uh, I think it was about two months ago when I first started really going through rookie stuff. I posted in our Discord. There's going to be two receivers that I'm going to probably be higher on that are going like maybe third round. And it was Jacob Cowing and Malachi Corley. Nice. So when I saw you snatched him, <laughs> I was like, all right, well, at least I can talk about Jacob. But yeah, yeah I I like Corley. I I you know, yeah. I, I don't want to steal your, your oh, thunder, I mean, it's, so I'll it's chime in after. I mean, he's he's in that. I, I couldn't find a, a, a strong, determined age, but it appears to be around 22. So um, I, I think he'll be 22 when he's drafted. Yeah, uh, maybe maybe a little older. So I know I know the sheets guys don't love that. Um, Cow, Cowing's 20. He's gonna be 23 when he's drafted. Yeah. So he's, I'm OK with that. He's changing his ways. He's changing his ways. Uh, 5'11", 210 out of Western Kentucky. Had a had a really strong 22. PFF grade at 83.0. That's 26 over all the wide receivers. Now I do put a 20% filter 
uh, on that um, just so that we're not looking at the high variance guys there. Mm-hmm. The uh, mock draft database has him somewhere around in the in the third round projected right now. We'll, we'll kind of see how that plays out through the process, which would be solid for for his draft capital. You know, this is he's he's kind of a slot player, ninety one percent career slot, but had his highest percentage in, in twenty three, only thirteen point five percent. But like I said, built a little thicker. Uh, he this guy is a yak or a rack machine here. Um, just one hundred fifteen targets, seventy nine receptions. That's good for twenty fifth overall. Nine hundred eighty five yards, thirty seventh. The yak per reception, eight point six. That's good for sixteenth overall. Um, the yak eight six hundred eighty three yards. That's good for fifth overall. The yards per route run seven two point seven eight. That's twenty sixth overall. Missed tackles forced fifteen. That's thirty fifth overall. Um, eleven TDs. That's eleventh overall. So just kind of checking a lot of boxes that I think, especially the metrics. When you I feel like when you get that yak per reception, the yards per route run, um, and some of those other things that are up a little higher. I think it starts to really open the analytical doors of people saying those are those are boxes that a lot of guys who have performed well at the next level check off. Is that uh, correct or? Yeah. And I, I, you know, whenever you said you want to talk about Malachi Corley, I took some notes here. So let me just delete everything you said. Eighty six percent from the slot check. Two point eight, two point seven, eight yards per route run. Check. 8.6 8.6 yards after catch per reception. Yak monster. That's what I have in my notes. <laughs> Check. Uh, you said late day, uh, late third round. I said, I think he can sneak into late day two. So yeah. third round. Check. Uh, one of the lower A dots, but again. Sure, but that's not what he, he does. But he's primarily running out of the slot. You, I mean, I just talked about Rasheed Rice on the last episode. Right. You know, during his rookie year, five and a half yard a dot. So he could be that guy that that plays close to the line of scrimmage, but he's giving you that yards after catch. I, I you know, you might get some types of like Debo Samuel comparisons mm-hmm. just because of the yak. Uh, only concern might be lighter competition in Conference USA, sure. Western Kentucky. They're throwing so much, uh, but again, like I talked about with Jacob Cowing, Malachi Corley, he gets open. Right. You know, and part of that is because he plays the slot, so it's maybe not facing that much press coverage. That's but, fine, but we're in the NFL at this point where I I don't worry about it it having to be from a certain spot, you know? Yep. As, uh, much, as much as maybe we once did, you know? Um, so r- right now for me, I, in, in a big tier where any one of these guys could jump up, so I have 206 to 211, and then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 guys across – all the positions that very well could fight for that two twelve spot, Jacob Cowing and Malachi Corley both in there. Yeah, and and even better twenty twenty two. I don't know when the breakout was as uh, for him, but I would assume it's probably twenty twenty two. But put it even those were the twenty three numbers that I was reading, and even better numbers in mm-hmm. twenty two. Uh, was, was smashed all through there. So it just wasn't a one-year phenom there. Like, I know some people will knock Xavier Leggett for being the, you know, senior breakout there. But um, but that's, yeah, I don't think that's what you're getting with Corley necessarily. Had had a nice 2022 and not a terrible 2021 either, uh, but but really strong last two years there uh, from him. So really interesting. I think if we're, if we're getting into that third round anywhere there, you know, if this is, you know, you mentioned Debo because of, of the yak and all that stuff, but any of that, any of the offshoots of that Shanahan tree that you mm-hmm. know, a Slowick wants to pick him up, or or a Shanahan, or a, a uh, McDaniel's down in my, you know, just any of those offshoots of that that kind of offense where you can have somebody just be put in the position to operate after the catch, it would be ideal. I mean, he he doesn't have the blazing speed, so maybe not Miami because you got it's like you got to run a four three or you're not going <laughs> yeah, to Miami. Yeah, yeah, you can't even. But, could you like Jalen Waddle, Tyree Kill stretching the defense, and you got Malachi Corley in the slot underneath? Uh, like that would be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I. You mentioned Xavier Leggett. There's a very good chance that at cost, Malachi Corley very well could be the better pick in rookie drafts at cost. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not advocating for taking him over Leggett. You know, straight up. But if Leggett is pushing into that. 112 ish range again, a lot could happen versus Malachi Corley in the beginning of the third, right? That, that, that's a fairly that, that's a big discrepancy, yeah. So, I, I like the Corley shout out there, yeah. All right, who you got next? 
Uh, not necessarily a sleeper, but I, I don't think a lot of folks are going to have him right now in the top two rounds. Uh, could he creep up there? Sure. But I think draft capital isn't going to be ideal. But Dylan Johnson running back out of Washington. I, another one, I think, I think just with the running back position in general and the strength of this class, it's not running back. Right. So we're going to see a lot of running backs go, I think, in that fourth fifth round range and i think dylan johnson's gonna be one of them nice size six foot 218 uh but right around four or five is speed that's what i've you know seen just in different sure. projections and sure. stuff uh extremely efficient mm-hmm. didn't have to do all that much in washington with their pass game but when he was at mississippi state 65 receptions his sophomore season yeah. now granted mississippi state right throwing the ball a lot right, right. Uh, missed three games in four years. He's a durable running back. He can handle a workload over 60% uh, rush attempt market share max, which is, uh, you know, one of the things I look at for running backs. Can they handle that workload? And Dylan Johnson can, you know, I, I talk about players. It cost Dylan Johnson. If we're comparing him to like a Donovan Edwards, Braylon Allen, Will Shipley, where they, I think they're going to go in drafts. Give me Dylan Johnson at cost uh, versus those other guys that I mentioned. So Dylan Johnson, uh, just a running back. I think we need to be looking at. Yeah, no, I I was a big uh, I was a a Huskies fan for the year this year. Been been a big Penix proponent and a big uh, just watched all their games. Was just they were just a really exciting team to watch. And and Dylan Johnson just came up time after time, big for them. Didn't get as, uh, enough love throughout the season. Then coming into the into the playoffs. Kind of started getting a little bit of love. Unfortunate that you didn't get to see him in that right. last game um, being so durable. Um, I'm sure he tried to go, gave it a go, and and, and couldn't do it. Um, but uh, I, I love that. I love Dylan Johnson. Uh, I think he's just just seems like a plug-and-play uh, kind of guy. Like he, he, There's nothing awesome but a bunch of really good, I think, is, is what you get there. Yeah, and I think that's a, a good way to frame it. He doesn't necessarily, you know, outside of the the rushing market share, you know, and the, the efficiency. I like he's not really going to wow you with his speed. He's right. not, you Flashy. know, yeah, like he's just going to be a solid back. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? You know, he he might like you said a plug and play option. Maybe he's a number two or three guy on the depth chart, but due to injuries, he gets an opportunity. And we all know that whenever, you know, we see those lead running backs go down, it's those backs like a Dylan Johnson that you could plug in. Right. And Hey, maybe he gets you 10 to 12 points, but you know, he's, he's going to be able to produce for you, I think for fantasy purposes. Yeah, I, I would, I would agree. I like that. Um, so my, my, uh, my last one here, and, and I, I might have another shout out or two before we get out of here, but I want to go Jalen Wright out of Tennessee. Seem again on the age. I, I had a, I got twenty with a question mark. It, I couldn't find a, a for sure age on him. I um, think he's going to be twenty one uh, during the, the draft. draft. Yeah, it looked like June was the birthday, twenty two thousand three, but I, I couldn't necessarily confirm that. And then I saw on some other sites there was twenty three miles per hour. He had been clocked at max speed on the field, which is fucking outstanding I, I i saw that in a, in a write-up or two now i don't know how, the, how how true that is mock draft database right now has him going late round like 220 range um <laughs> or undrafted but i think this the combine is going to play so big for this guy because if he does have that kind of speed and can get it going um he's kind of a uh, has a long stride to him so you don't see it all the time but once it gets going there is some times where he is pulling away from other there's other times where he gets caught and he's even but um, he definitely has a bit of a longer stride there, um, but overall, just just a pretty good profile on him. Five ten two uh, or five eleven two ten, which you know I don't think we're super concerned about height and weight anymore. But you know that's that's uh, that's you know right right within where I, I wouldn't mind seeing my running back be. PFF had him at a ninety one point oh grade. That's sixteenth overall, and I know you know take the PFF grade for what it is, but it's a good kind of as you're scrolling through things to just kind of I'll mark that down and go check that out. Um, you know, you don't need to take it as the gospel. You do your own work as you always should. Um, but uh, 136 attempts, 
thousand yards for only four touchdowns but 7.4 yards per attempt that's fourth in the country the breakaway percentage was 52.1 that's good for 16th overall design runs over 15 yards or more 19 of those uh that was 15th overall uh design runs over 10 or more uh that's 35 that's 20th overall and then eighth in in yak per attempt with 4.35 22 receptions so hits the hits the threshold i think for what a lot of guys want to see only one drop in there and then the the yards per route run pretty solid 1.33 that's good for 36 overall and then the elusive rating which is another pff stat take it for what it is but 132.2 20th overall so kind of showing you the picture of kind of what he is a, a pretty elusive guy with some good metrics good speed pretty good burst like i said um a little bit of a long strider there a lot of patience with this guy which you know all, you know can sometimes be a detriment but um he's kind of slow to the hole a little bit not a whole lot of wasted movement i would say he's always kind of going north and south but he does use kind of a lot of lateral moves in going north and south not in lateral of going east and west but kind of has a little chop to his game that he'll use but always kind of staying up field a um, little bit of an upright runner so i guess you could be upset about that uh, but if, you know multiple times finding him little small creases turn into big gains for him um, so just seems to be all around a really good player who may be a little undervalued right now and again i think the combine could j take this from a late round to a day two day three just but way the running back class is the combine i think really could catapult a, a player like uh, jalen wright I think he's going to put up one of the faster times at the running back position in the 40. I I, I think, like you said, I think the combine is going to kind of bump him up. Uh, big play potential. 52% of his rushing yards come on carries over 15 yards. That, that's fifth best among running backs coming out in 2024. Number two in yards after uh, contact per attempt. That's number one in the class. Didn't necessarily have the huge workload. You mentioned the right. limited they were touchdown. Kind of splitting ups. it up between three guys plus yep. the quarterback runs. You know, it's interesting because if you look at the guys that go later in the NFL draft and then certainly later in fantasy drafts, there's one thing that kind of pops out and it's that speed score. Mm -hmm. And if he does put up the the 40 time that I'm seeing a lot of projections on, like an Isaiah Pacheco a Jerome Ford uh, in the discord two years ago. I said, if there's somebody that can be like an, uh, Elijah Mitchell at that time, mm -hmm. I thought it could have been like Jerome Ford. Right. These guys that pop that, you know, he d went what the fourth round, I think fifth round, fourth or fifth, but, yeah. but Jalen Wright, even if he's undrafted, even if he goes late day three, that's somebody that's probably going to be, you can get him in the fourth round of your rookie drafts. Yeah. Limited, limited risk. But there was a lot of upside. Uh, you talked about the 1.33 yards per route run out of running backs with at least 25 targets this year. That was 25th out of the 77 that qualified. So he can, can, can uh, perform out of the backfield when asked to catch and extremely efficient. Yeah. And that goes from both a number perspective. And if you, you watch the film, you talked about limited wasted movements. That kind of goes hand in hand. Right. So 5'11", 210, good size. Are you taking him in the second round? No. No, I don't but, think so. You know, there, I think he could catapult up into the third, potentially late second because of the, the, the state of the running backs if everything goes well and he starts trending in that direction, but maybe more likely of what you're kind of saying. But that's the type of running back that we've seen – get an opportunity, especially if he were to land, even again, if he went sixth, seventh round of the NFL draft, if he landed somewhere with kind of a muddy backfield, right? Take, take the shot. Cause you never know if he's going to get the opportunity and he very well could. So 100%. I, I, uh, I actually added him to the sheet today. I, I knew a little bit about him, but I was glad that you mentioned his name. Cause it made me dig in a little bit. More right. My right. Uh, any, anybody else you want to mention before we get out of here? Yeah, not necessarily a sleeper, but Audric Estime, like yeah. Notre Dame, 5'11", 227, big boy. Uh, I, again, I think he's one of those running backs that goes early day three, 20 years old for the draft, extremely efficient, strong in the passing game, 4.27 yards after contact per attempt. Good luck bringing him down. Middle of the road in terms of explosive plays, but explosive enough. and Especially for in, his size. I know. In that running back three tier 
I, I could see him being the number three back here that I would be interested in after Trey Benson and Jonathan Brooks out of Florida State and Texas, respectively. Yeah. So he might not get that day two draft capital, but Audric Estime, uh, he's going to be somebody that's certainly going to be on my radar, and he checks a lot of boxes, and especially if he were to kind of bump up into that third round draft capital. Woo! I, <laughs> Pants Day two, off. baby. Yeah. Day two. Yeah. All bets are off. Is that is that Barry Sanders or Roderick Estime? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but just another name that we need to be looking at here yeah. uh, as, as early maybe as like 202, 203, depending on how things go over the next few months. Yeah, well, we just did a mock, and he ended up just kind of at a nip near around. I think I might have taken him at 209, 209 or something like that. Yeah. Was, <laughs> was super stoked about it and, and – I, I, the second round is going to be so much fun here to, to sort out over the next uh, couple of months here. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, the, I'm, I'm anxious to get to Will Shipley because I haven't gotten to him yet. I don't know if you have any feelings about him before we leave. But um, since Jason isn't here, I wanted to try to squeeze a Clemson Tiger in. Uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he, he is like, for me... Just very middle of the road. Would he be vanilla? If he were a flavor, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I, I like he doesn't like like get me like I, right now. I have Quorum Estime, uh, Bucky Irving tier together. Oh, I love. Bucky. I have I, I have them over. Uh, Will Shipley. Okay. As things stand today, I think there's a very good chance that Braylon Allen, Will Shipley could be the most overdrafted running backs mm. in rookie drafts. Okay. Haven't dove into Allen yet either. I've been mostly on the wide receiver side of things, but slightly digging into the running backs a little bit. So, all right, cool. Well, JB, where can we find everything at before we get out of here? Yeah, thanks for having me on. This was a blast, even though, you know, I, I didn't get to hang out with with Matt and Jay, but you're, you're good enough for me, uh, Casey. You're good yeah, enough for me. I'll take third place. But uh, yeah, uh, find me on Twitter at the Bauer club. We have our Patreon. We got our discord over at dynasty theory. We have a show every Tuesday night, nine o'clock Eastern time. And on Twitter, that's dynasty theory. FF. We got the Patreon. We got the free discord. So uh, if you look for us, you'll be able to find us. Excellent. Be sure to go check that out. Um, you can be sure to, uh, like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. Five-star reviews if you're listening on the podcast. You can hit us up on Patreon if you want some more content. We do an extra show just about every week, usually three, at least three a month. Um, we got a Discord as well, um, so go check that out. You get that with your Patreons. Uh, we're doing all sorts of fun stuff over there. Our drafts will kick back up to be picking up ADP here um, and putting that together as soon as they add the rookies uh, into Sleeper. We'll, we'll get on that heavy. We were doing it a little bit beforehand, but we been trying to wait um, until they add those. Um, so as soon as that drops, we will be hammering those again. So we'll have our own very own ADP, uh, which you can get through the Patreon. So uh, anyway, we really much appreciate you, JB. This was a pleasure. Love you. Good to see you. Uh, hopefully we'll do this again sometime soon over the next month or two. Uh, and we'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>